Good afternoon and welcome to today's presentation provided to you by Mid Penn Legal Services. This presentation is about the current Pennsylvania and federal moratorium's impact on mortgages. My name is Jamie Bonzer. I'm an attorney with uh, Mid Penn Legal Services in the Adams County office here in uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm happy that you could join me today. Sorry, we'll let's go back. There we are. So who are we here at MedPin Legal Services? We are a nonprofit public interest law firm that provides free civil legal services to low-income residents in 18 counties in Central Pennsylvania. So what that means, we kind of do a wide range of civil services. I specialize in mortgage foreclosure actions. We also handle family law, landlord-tenant matters, unemployment, benefits, utilities, you name it, I probably couldn't list all the services that we provide. So if you're facing le legal difficulties, even more than a mortgage foreclosure issue, please go ahead and, and give us a call. Our physical offices are currently closed, but we are all working remotely. So if you need assistance, call our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-326-9177. Although I can't promise that we can help you, someone will certainly be willing to talk to you. Additionally, if you want more information about the program and what we do, you can visit our website at www.midpin.org or also clearly you can follow us on social media. So to get started with the presentation itself, the purpose of this presentation is to inform viewers of the current status of foreclosure actions in Pennsylvania as of Friday, May 8th, 2020. Mortgage foreclosures are a very complex topic. There's a lot of moving pieces to handling the mortgage foreclosure. So I really wanna present this, this presentation as a very basic overview of the moratoriums themselves, what's going on and what reliefs would be available to you if you could not pay your mortgage due to COVID-19. I am a lawyer, so I am going to throw out some warnings for you. Uh, the first one is this presentation is not for general informational or it's just for general information purposes, I should say. Um, this is not intended to offer legal advice and should not be considered legal advice. Now, I know I just told you that I wasn't gonna give you legal advice. I will give you one piece of legal advice. Do not go to court and say that the lawyer on Facebook told you to do this. That, that would be very bad. So um, again, we're just here for some general information purposes. If you are facing a specific legal problem, if you are facing foreclosure or you do not pay your mortgage, please, please seek legal counsel, give MidPen a call or reach out to another legal services provider. The other caution I wanna give you is uh, dates, deadlines and other information contained in this presentation will likely change. I'm very lawyer when I say will likely change, I'm going to tell you they're going to change. Uh, Things are changing daily in this atmosphere as new stimulus packages are passed, as the governor takes new actions to protect consumers and homeowners. Uh, the, the dates I'm going to give you, some of the provisions I might tell you are in place, they are gonna change. So I wanna remind you, we are filming today, Friday, May 8, 2020. Everything is good as of that day. If I come in next Monday on the 11th and things have completely changed, I would not be surprised. So if you're watching this two weeks from now, three weeks from now, use this as a good basis to get started on what you need to do, but, but really go back and check some of those dates. And I'll highlight some dates that I think are likely to change and that you should probably check moving forward as we discuss them. Okay. So the way I'd like to structure this presentation for you to kind of make the information as accessible as possible is really just to cover three questions. And the three questions we're gonna to try to answer for our viewers are, should I pay my mortgage in the current crisis? What if I cannot pay my mortgage? And what type of mortgage reliefs are available to me currently? So with that being said, let's get started. The first question, should I pay my mortgage in the current crisis? The short answer, yes. If you have the ability and means to continue to make your monthly mortgage payment, then you should absolutely do so. If you're an essential worker, if you're continuing to work, if you have not seen a decline in your income, make your mortgage payment, okay? The current moratoriums in place are meant to assist homeowners who cannot 
pay their mortgage due to economic hardships caused by the COVID-19 emergency. All right, the moratoriums are not a reason to skip your mortgage payments if you have the ability to make your payments without undue hardship. Every relief option that we're going to discuss here today in this presentation is merely a pause or a suspension of payments there have been no forgiveness programs put in place. And right now I'm not anticipating that there would be any. So every, every program, every relief, if you choose not to pay your mortgage, um, you're still gonna be liable to make up those missed payments at the end of the moratoriums and you will be expected to pay. And quite clearly, if you fail to pay your mortgage, this is going to result in legal action for you. So again, I think while the various government agencies and lenders are being very understanding of the unique situation we're finding ourselves in, if you are lucky enough to be able to pay your mortgages, please, please continue to do so. So that being said, what if you can't pay your mortgage? What if you were laid off, you were furloughed, you were part of a two income household and your partner cannot was, was furloughed or laid off? you, you um, became ill, you're trying to take care of an ill family member. So if you are facing financial hardships due to COVID-19 and do not believe that you can pay your mortgage, what should you do? So unfortunately, there isn't a quick or an easy answer to this question. There are relief options, but they're gonna depend on the type of mortgage you have, which we're gonna discuss here in a few minutes. And additionally, each mortgage servicer will have their own process requirements and forms to apply for for any re available relief. So I can't send you to one website. I can't give you one telephone number to call. I can't say this is the magic form to fill out and, and send into your bank. Uh, you're, you're going to have to do some leg work on this. And, and while we're kind of explaining things, I want you to note that I use the term mortgage servicer. That might be a term that you're unfamiliar with. When you took your mortgage, you you had a lender, a mortgagor, usually a bank, might have been a mortgage company, might have been someone like Bank of America or PNC, and that's the name that appears on your mortgage. However, if you check your monthly mortgage statements, the entity that you actually send your mortgage payments to, that you contact when you have issues with your mortgage, that will be that might be different than Bank of America or PNC. It may not. Some of the big banks, they, they do their own servicing, and sometimes they, they send your loans out to someone else to handle. Um, you want to deal with the mortgage servicer. You want to deal with the person that you send your payments to. They're the ones that can provide you help at this time. So when you see the term mortgage servicer, that's what I'm talking about. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. So right off the bat, before we get into what the moratoriums mean and the reliefs available, I wanted to overview some best practices. If you hit that situation, where maybe you scrounged together March's payment and you made April's, but May's here and there's just no way I'm gonna be able to pay my mortgage, what should I do? First off, immediately contact your mortgage servicer, right? That's the very first thing. No matter what kind of loan you have, you wanna call them. You shouldn't assume that your mortgage servicer will know that you cannot pay your mortgage due to COVID-19. There's just like, I'm just not gonna pay May. And then all of a sudden they're gonna go, well, of course, Jamie, had an issue because of COVID, so we're not gonna worry about this. I need to be proactive, I need to call them and tell them I'm, I can't pay and I need assistance. So you must call your mortgage servicer, you have to ask for assistance. You should explain that you're having difficulty making your mortgage payment due to COVID-19, all right? That is a very important thing. That, that will trigger a lot of the assistance that they're willing to offer you, the same that the hardship is due to COVID-19. You may have to provide your servicer with documentation of your hardship. A lot of the federally backed mortgages, which we're going to discuss, they're, they're saying a, a simple kind of statement is enough. If you have a non-federally backed mortgage, I'm not sure what they might require from you. They might require a letter. They might require a letter from your employer saying you're furloughed, but you'll be able to come back to work soon. So you're just going to need to see what they want, but I wouldn't be surprised if they ask you for some kind of documentation. And if you're unsure who your, your servicer is, you want to contact or check the contact information on your most recent mortgage statement. This seems kind of obvious, but I will tell you mortgage servicers change and they can change quite frequently and they may or may not have given you notice. So if you're someone who has like an automatic debit out of an account, or maybe you just go online and you pay something and you never really pay attention, 
and you go, who should I contact? And you grab a, a statement from three months ago, that may not be your most current servicer. So you want to find your most recent statement and contact the number listed there. So what are some other best practices you can do as you kind of enter into this, this world of not being able to pay your mortgage? Document every interaction you have with a representative from your mortgage servicer, right? You wanna write down things like the date you contacted them, the time, the representative's name, and the employee number ID. You wanna take brief notes about what you discussed, right? So if you contact your servicer on May 8th and ask for a forbearance, and you talk to John, and John's ID number is 000, and John says, sure, we'll send you the paperwork. We're going to need you to send that back to us by the 30th. And on May 27th, you call again, and you speak to Larry, more, um, employee number 111, and you say, hey, I have some questions about this paperwork before I send it in. And Larry says, oh, you should have had that to us on the 20th. You're going to be able to say, oh, no, no, I spoke to John. And John said, I didn't need to get it to you till the 30th. Additionally, if things proceed to, to needing an attorney, I, I love it when my, my clients come in and they have this kind of documentation. Here's every time I've talked to someone with my lender. It, it makes things so much easier for us. Um, I am going to warn you, you may have difficulty contacting someone at your servicer. Many people are experiencing long wait times. I know I have some cases that are still being negotiated during this, and there have been many a day I've had my phone on, on speaker, on waiting on hold and doing other work for, for an hour or more, waiting to get through. Services are just like everyone else. They're trying to limit the number of people they have in the office. They're trying to get people to work remotely, but it has cut into their ability to help everyone, in addition to the large volume of calls that they are receiving. Make sure to check your lender's website for COVID-19 specific information and advice. I've seen a lot of websites that have links to email accounts or, or ways that you can get a con you can get in touch with your servicer other than calling that 1-800 number. Be proactive. If your lender offers you mortgage assistance, make sure to meet all your deadlines. Submit any requested paperwork or documentation in a timely manner. Open your mail, read everything, follow all the directions. If you're unsure of what is required from your lender or servicer, ask for clarification. Make sure you keep copies of everything your mortgage servicer sends you and everything you send to your mortgage servicer, if you send them a whole assistance packet, they're gonna probably call you up and say, hey, we're missing the uh, release that was required. And if you have that copy, you can look through it and say, no, that was page eight, go check page eight. So very important, you know what you sent. Again, if things progress to the point you need an attorney, being able to provide your attorney with everything that you've sent to them is very helpful for us. Um, and then finally, it's kind of my last piece of advice before we get into the types of relief available. I want you to be alert. Don't fall for any mortgage assistance scams or outside offers to refinance your mortgage. There are unfortunately some not great people taking advantage of the current situation. Be very careful of anyone who asks for money to help you obtain mortgage relief. Um, if you're on the internet and a pop-up ad comes up saying, hey, let's refinance your mortgage, be wary of that. Don't give out social security numbers, account numbers, passwords, or other personal information over the internet on the telephone. Clearly, if you call your servicer, you're the one initiating contact and they ask for your social security number and account number to verify your identity, that's fine. If someone from Joe's mortgage company calls you and says, I have a great deal for you, I just need your social security number and the name of your first pet, that should raise a lot of red flags for you. Right, so, so just be careful as we proceed um, through the situation. So the first thing I can, we need to determine before I can tell you what kind of reliefs might be available for you under the moratoriums are gonna be, you have to determine what type of mortgage you have. Um, so that's gonna depend on the type of mortgage you have. There's a lot of different mortgages out there for the purposes of keeping things simple today. We're going to look at mortgages in terms of being in two categories. Our two categories are either they are federally backed mortgages or they are not federally backed mortgages. And let's dive in and see what I mean when I say that. So a federally backed mortgage are mortgages that are owned, insured, or guaranteed by some sort of 
government entity, federal government entity, all right? The most common ones that you see, you might be familiar with, are going to be the Federal Housing Administration called FHA, the Veterans Administration, VA, U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, very familiar names, uh, the United States Department of Agricultural Rural Housing Services or RHS, and there's also federally backed HECMs, which stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgages, which are commonly referred to as reverse mortgages, which are available to elderly people who have a lot of equity in their home and they, they'd like to use those as a means to pull the equity out of their home. So what reliefs are available if I have a federally backed mortgage? So under the Corona, Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act or CARES Act, uh, which specifically we're looking at section 4, 4022, there is a 60-day moratorium on foreclosures for federally backed mortgages, All right? This moratorium began on March 18th, and it's currently set to expire on May 17th, 2020. May 17th, 2020 is one of those dates I want to mark for you that if you're looking at this two, three weeks from now, a month and a half from now, double check that date. Uh, I know we know that Congress is currently debating uh, additional stimulus packages and stimulus bills, I would not be surprised to see that we see a further extension on the moratorium date uh, for federal for federal mortgages. So, so May 17th is going to be a day you wanna, date you want to mark, and you're going to want to double check as we get closer. What does this moratorium do? It, it prohibits mortgage servicers from filing any new foreclosure actions for failure to make scheduled mortgage payments, right? Again, you know, if you, you paid April's mortgage, but you, you're just not going to be able to make May's mortgage, they're not going to be able to proceed uh, with a foreclosure against you until at least May 17th. Additionally, if you were in the midst of a foreclosure action prior to the COVID-19 uh, emergency happening, uh, they, they cannot schedule or conduct a share sale on your property. If your property would have been foreclosed on and if you were going to go through a share sale, they can't schedule that or hold that. And if your home had been sold at a sheriff sale, they can't evict or eject you from your residence. So you will be able to remain in your residence at least through May 17th and more likely than not longer, but I can't guarantee that at this point. Um, additionally, under the CARES Act, homeowners with a federally backed mortgage may request a payment forbearance. Let's be clear. A forbearance is essentially a pause button on the requirement to pay your monthly mortgage payment. It's a pause button, it's not the erase button. This is not forgiveness, this is forbearance. So that means it doesn't excuse you from your mortgage payment and you will be expected to pay back any missed payments at the end of the forbearance. How and when you pay back your missed payments will depend on the type of mortgage you have and the financial situation at the end of the forbearance. I've seen a lot of directives for the various programs uh, where they're going to structure it a variety of different ways. One issue I do want to raise that I've kind of seen on social media and, and people discussing is this idea about lump sums, that if you take a forbearance, there may be a lump sum due. The idea that if you take a three-month forbearance and your mortgage payment is $1,000 a month, at the end of the three-month forbearance, you're going to need to come up with $3,000 right then and there. For non-federally backed uh, mortgages, I don't know the answer to that. I think you have to very carefully read whatever your, your lender offers you and make sure you understand what the payments will be. But I do know that for certain federally backed mortgages, specifically uh, the FHAs, VAs, and RHS loans, there have been directives given out to those agencies that they should not and cannot require lenders or borrowers to make a lump sum payment at the end of their forbearance period. So, so that's very important for you to know. Um, again, the forbearance is not automatic. You have to contact your mortgage servicer and request the forbearance. They're just not gonna assume because you missed May's payment, it must be because of COVID and you must want a forbearance. You need to talk to them. Qualifying homeowners, you can request a six month or 180 day forbearance. At the end of the six month forbearance, you may be able to request an additional six month payment uh, if your hardship still exists. Additionally, this may be a surprise or not a surprise to you, they won't mind if you, you don't wanna take the entire six months. If in three months you're back to work and your ability to repay has been restored, 
they'll, they'll let you just go ahead with the three month forbearance versus the entire six months. Uh, additionally, the mortgage company, or in this case, a Mint server, may not charge you late fees, other fees, or penalties during the term of this forbearance, right? So if they're trying to say there's additional fees attached to this, that, that's wrong. I also would like to note, um, this not only applies to people who have just recently experienced trouble paying their mortgage, this forbearance, the ability to apply for the forbearance includes people who were previously delinquent. So even if you had missed February or January's payment, um, you can still contact them and, and apply to this for this forbearance if you have a federally backed mortgage. So I think that's important for you know. <coughs> Pardon me. There may be additional mortgage relief available to homeowners with federally backed mortgages. This gets a little more complicated. It, it depends based on which program your mortgage is through. The other relief options will be dependent on the type of loan. For example, I know if you have a FHA loan, in addition to a forbearance, you may apply for something that's called a, a standalone partial claim. And that's gonna be for people who are current on their mortgages at the start of the crisis or were less than 30 days delinquent as of March 1st, 2020. So, you know, it, it behooves you, if you have a certain type of federally backed mortgage, go ahead, reach out, contact your servicer, in addition to the forbearance, in addition to the moratorium, see what other relief that they can, can have, um, pardon, can offer you. So you might be wondering, how do I know if, one of, if my mortgage is one of these types of federally backed loans? So there's a couple of ways we'll run through them pretty quickly for you. Um, FHA mortgages, the mortgage will have an FHA ca case number associated with it somewhere on the mortgage. You'll also see the term used throughout the mortgage, FHA mortgage. Additionally, you can just call and ask your server. You know, that's one option. HUD has the COVID-19 page. I placed the web address there on the screen for you. They have some great FAQs, uh, a lot of information. If you have an FHA mortgage, I highly recommend you check out that page and see the information they have available for you. One thing, if you do have an FHA mortgage, I want to make you aware of, it is possible that your mortgage lost its FHA status. Okay, that can happen. If you call your servicer, you know you have an FHA mortgage and they say, no, it's not, and there's some concerns for you, HUD does have a national services or a national servicing center. The phone number is listed there. You can call them and, and investigate with them and see what happened. Uh, additionally, VA loans, look at your mortgage. It should have language identifying it as a VA insured mortgage. Additionally, when you went to your closing, if you recall, uh, you would have gotten a closing settlement statement with all the closing costs broken out. You would have seen VA uh, Veteran Administration specific things included in that, and that hopefully would stick out in your head. Additionally, you can visit the Department of Veterans Affairs website for additional information. Fannie Mae Loans, they have a great website where you can actually just look up your loan. Additionally, if you don't have access to a computer, they have a 1-800 number you can call to see if your loan is a Fannie Mae loan. Uh, they have additionally a website with some information available. Freddie Mac, same deal, a website to look up your loan, a 1-800 number to call, and a, a website with some specific COVID information for you. USDA and RHS loans, they're a little different. You're going to need to just call your loan servicer and, and request that. So what if my mortgage is not federally backed, right? What if I just have a straight up mortgage with PNC or Bank of America or Citizens Bank? What options are available to me now? So about one in three residential mortgages are not federally backed. So you will have a lot of viewers who will fall under the previous category. If your mortgage doesn't fall within the types of federally backed mortgages we've previously discussed, then your mortgage does not qualify for relief under the CARES Act. Right, so everything I just talked about, the, the mandatory forbearances, the other reliefs available, that's not going to apply to you. There is one exception, and under the CARES Act, section 4201 of the CARES Act, which applies to, to all lenders, whether they're federally backed or not, and, and creditors as well, it provides that from January 31st, 2020, until 120 days after the end of this emergency, if your mortgage servicer makes a quote, the language in the bill is an accommodation. What it means by accommodation is it makes any sort of payment arrangement with you, either a forbearance or a suspension. 
Um, with respect to one or more of your parent payments, they can't negatively report that on your credit, right? So usually if you fail to make a mortgage payment for a certain amount of time, your lender is going to start making negative credit reports on you. In this case, um, right now, under the federal law, they, they won't be able to do that, at least for that 120 days. In addition to that, what other forms of relief are available for you? Well, remember how I said things are changing daily? I have to tell you that yesterday I had beautiful slides prepared for you with very craft, carefully crafted language describing what was going to happen. And then at noon, in the midst of my preparation, Governor Wolf announced on May 7th, 2020, that he had signed an executive order, which literally made me take all of those slides, crumple them up, and throw them in a trash can. So what we have now is much more general information than I was planning to share with you um, as we look at the impact of the governor's executive order from yesterday. So Governor Wolf did sign an executive order, which stayed the notice requirements under Act 6 and Act 91. Those are the laws that require certain notice provisions in mortgage foreclosures. And he stayed those until July 10th, 2020. So what this executive order essentially did was it extended the previous statewide mortgage moratorium in Pennsylvania, which was set to expire under a, an order by the Pennsylvania Supreme Court on May 11th, 2020, and they extended it for an additional 60 days. What does this mean? So the executive order clearly states no new mortgage foreclosure actions may be filed until July 10th, 2020, right? So that's it. If you failed to make April's payments and they would be entitled to file mortgage foreclosure against you at some time in the middle of June, then, then they can't. They, they can't do that until July 10th. It also appears based on statements made by Governor Wolf that the intent was to extend the moratorium to any pending foreclosure actions, and this means it should apply to potentially to sheriff sales and ejectment actions. That being said, when I read the executive order and I, I spoke with some other advocates in our program, the order itself seems unclear about how, it, how it's going to affect pending foreclosure actions. Um, so all I can tell you at this point is advocates are talking, there's a flurry of emails going back and forth on various listservs we are on. Um, some advocates are seeking clarification from the courts and from the governor himself, and, and we're working on it. Um, so like I said, this is again something that's evolving. If you're, looking, if you're looking at this a month from now, things may have settled. We may have a better understanding of what the governor intended, but right now I can't give you very many answers. What I can tell you is the current mortgage moratorium under the Supreme Court order is in effect until May 11th. So if prior to March 17th, 2020, you had been involved in a mortgage foreclosure action, then nothing may be done in that action until at least May 11th, 2020, pursuant to the Supreme Court's order of April 28th. However, there is a chance the governor's executive action may extend these protections to July 10th, 2020. What's, my, what's the kind of best practice moving forward in this situation, given that we're only 24, 24 hours out from the governor's order? Until we have a better understanding of the impact of the governor's executive order, if after May 11th, your mortgage servicer tries to proceed with the pending foreclosure, i.e. they file for a default judgment against you, they schedule a sheriff's sale, they file an ejectment action against you, you should contact your local legal services provider or an attorney immediately. Hopefully at that point, we'll have a better understanding of where we're going, what this means. They may tell you, nope, everything's covered under the executive order. They may say, no, that didn't apply and we're going to have to find some other help for you. So, Unfortunately, not clear advice, but my best advice. All right. So some additional information if you have a non-federally backed mortgage. There has been a push to encourage mortgage lenders and servicers to work with borrowers affected by COVID-19. What are these efforts involved? On March 30th, the Pennsylvania Attorney General Josh Shapiro announced what he, the, the PA CARES package. This is a voluntary program where banks and credit unions essentially agree to institute certain consumer protections for the purposes of mortgages. This would include a 60-day moratorium on foreclosures and a 90-day grace period for mortgage payments. As of May 7th, approximately 15 banks and credit unions are participating in this program. Again, remember, it's completely voluntary on their part. But they do include some of the largest lenders in the state, Bank of America, PNC, Citizens, uh, 
First National Bank are all, all participating members. If, you, if you're watching this after May 8th and you wanna know did my lender sign up for this, then you should visit the attorney, the attorney general's COVID-19 page and check. Additionally, to uh, the non-federally backed loans, there, are, there is a certain type of loan specific to Pennsylvania, and that's a loan that you have through the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency, also known as PHFA. Additionally, if you are experiencing mortgage trouble or you're in the process of a foreclosure, you might have applied for a Homeowners Emergency Mortgage Assistance Program loan, also known as the HEMAP program, that is specific to Pennsylvania, what are the statuses there with uh, PHFA? Uh, March 18th, 2020, PH PHFA announced that a mortgage foreclosure moratorium would be a, in effect, and that it included pending foreclosures and evictions and ejectment actions, and that this moratorium would be in effect, quote, until impacts from the virus subside. That is hands down the broadest moratorium that I've seen. I, I don't know what that means. That could be a few weeks. That could be a year from now. So if you have a PHFA mortgage and you're concerned about when the moratorium will, will end, you need to, to keep monitoring that. Additionally, PHFA is going to offer loan forbearances. Again, very similar to what we discussed under the federally backed mortgages. You'll need to contact PHFA for more information. Once again, they're not going to assume you want a forbearance until you let them know. Uh, they will also said that borrowers will not be charged late fees during the forbearance and that borrowers' credit ratings will not be impacted by accepting the forbearance. So that's very important. Uh, you can visit the PHFA has a, a list of COVID-19 resources, which is found at the website I provided below. I will say I went on there, it's a great list. I, I flagged a lot of things I wanna go back and look at myself personally. So I, I highly encourage you to, to take a look at that. Also worth noting, speaking of the HEMAP program, if you'd previously been experiencing trouble paying your mortgage and you had applied for a HEMAP loan, PHFA did state that they would continue processing the loans that they received applications for um, prior to April 15th. If you applied after April 15th, they stopped accepting new HEMAP applications. Uh, we don't know when they'll, they'll open the HEMAP program back up, but given that Governor Wolf's executive order stayed the Act 91 notice requirements, it's likely that HEMAP assistance is not going to be available at least until that June 10th date. So just be aware of that. Uh, other concerns, this is very important, I wanted to address. Uh, advocates across the state, as we've been talking, as we've been looking at ongoing foreclosure issues and, and how the moratoriums have been infecting and impacting uh, our clients, we've noticed that despite these continuing moratorias, moratoriums, some services are continuing to proceed with foreclosure actions. We're seeing things being filed in the court when, when they should not be. Um, if you received notice after March 18th, 2020, and before the end of any of the relevant moratorium uh, periods that I've discussed with you today, so if you have a federally backed mortgage, that's going to be uh, that's going to be May 17th. If you have a non-federally backed mortgage, that's going to be a, at a minimum May 11th. It may potentially be July 10th. If you receive any kind of notice uh, that that your lender has either filed a new foreclosure complaint against you or is proceeding with the existing foreclosure complaint. And that could mean filing for or seeking a default judgment, scheduling a share sale, or filing an ejectment action against you. Please immediately contact your local legal services provider or a private attorney, even call the court. That needs to be brought to somebody's attention that this is going on and, and things can be done to help you at that point. So, some final thoughts. I'm, I'm very sorry that I can't offer you a, a straightforward or easy answer to what to do if you can't pay your mortgage during these troubling times. Uh, you know, we're all in unknown waters and we're all just trying to make it through the best we can. I will tell you that there are many dedicated advocates 
helping their clients. If you have, if you're having problems, if you're having trouble, if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out. We are here to help you and to help you get through this. Um, and I really just hope that you all stay safe and healthy and that at the end of this, we will all be okay. Um, with that being said, again, if you have specific concerns, specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Midpoint Legal Services. Our phone number is 1-800-326-9177. Again, we may not be able to offer you a lot of assistance, but someone will speak with you and try to get you the help that you need. Um, with that, I hope you have a lovely evening and take care.